to The Rebel Edge, a mental performance series for athletes. We're here with head volleyball coach here at Ole Miss, Kayla Banworth, and we're going to be talking about something that so many of us really struggle with, and one of the main things, I think, that holds athletes back, and that's fear of failure, fear of making a mistake. Mm -hmm. So thanks for coming. Yeah, of course. It's good to be here. Absolutely. So tell me about... Um, how you see that fear of failure, of mm -hmm. making a mistake, uh, plague athletes and hold them back? Oh, I, you know, you see it all the time in athletics and it's it's crippling. It's literally crippling, you know. Um, you, you get, your mind gets taken over by this fear of failure and this, this want of perfection, um, which is impossible. We all know that, but we don't accept it. Um, so this fear of failure just kind of takes over our mind and um, literally just takes over our body like we just we lose control over our body so um it's you can't play free and you can't you can't be in control when you know that fear of failure is taking over right. the other thing is you're not focusing on what you're doing because yeah. you're focused on a future that may or may not happen right right that's not real <laughs> yeah exactly so there's a couple of things that i like to bring up um to athletes and i'll just uh you know, talk to you about it now. So, who is the best uh, athlete in your sport, or even not? Um, yeah, right now on the women's side, it's um, probably an outside hitter uh, from China named Zhu Ting, um, and then there's a, an opposite hitter from Italy, Iganu. Um, so, those are the two that that comes to mind right now. Okay. Um, they're so good that they never make mistakes and everything that they put out there, <laughs> they execute perfectly, right? Yeah, no. No. No, that's far from the case. Right. But how is that if that's what is plaguing so many athletes that they're worried about making a mistake, but the top athletes that you just mentioned mm -hmm. do? Yeah. I mean, it's... It all stems from this fear of fear of failure, mm -hmm. the fear of what could happen. Right. Um, again, that's in the future, and it's literally not real. Right. Like we're making it up on our heads. Yes. Um, so this fear of, of not wanting to look bad or mm -hmm. fail or make mistakes, um, it just takes over. For sure. Yeah. It keeps athletes playing safe mm -hmm. and not taking risks, which that's not the way that's the way to not lose but it's mm -hmm. not the way to win right and it's n definitely not the way to get better mm -hmm. uh, so those are the two key things you know you're not playing with freedom so you're probably not enjoying it right right <laughs> and you're not uh, growing because you're not challenging yourself yeah and you're not gonna rise to the top so um, one of the things um, that like if you had come to me and this was a struggle for you I would have you think about those two athletes mm -hmm. and then kind of challenge you, um, like how conceited yeah. do you think that you are <laughs> right. that you should make fewer mistakes right. than those two athletes. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a humorous way because that's the place of conceit or hubris is not where this comes from, mm -hmm. but that is the essence of where it gets to mm -hmm. when you can't accept that this is part of the sport yeah. so acceptance is so important to say i'm going to have mistakes if i'm challenging myself the other thing is if you are not failing and the the use of that word is you know arguable um, so if you are making it every single time, mm -hmm. then your goals suck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. Yep. Your goals, like your ability here, mm -hmm. your goals should always be right about there so that you can reach them, just not yet. Right. It's going to happen soon. And then guess what? You know? Yeah. So that's a challenge, um, that I give to athletes a lot that yeah. like, you should be missing it. Yeah. I mean, sport is so imperfect. Mm -hmm. And there's no, like, perfect match or perfect game. And um, it's just you're going to make mistakes, and that's just inevitable. Mm -hmm. um, but leaning into those mistakes and 
and using those to get better and continuing to set higher goals um, is vital. Is right. vital. And I think that is where a bigger question for a different um, episode comes <laughs> up is, um, are you playing for the win or are you playing for the experience? Because this journey is hard mm -hmm. if you're just after the win column or the accolades. Yeah. You have to love what you're doing as you're doing it. Yeah. And yes, some people don't love practice as much as the competition. Some people are actually the opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, but being able to find value and enjoyment in all of it um, keeps you able to um, not have those successes all the time right. without fail. Um, another thing that I'll bring up is like, so um, non-conference, uh, almost exhibition game preseason, mm -hmm. how packed is that house going to be? I would guess it's going to be pretty empty. Okay. Yeah. Um, but this is typically, for most teams, um, a game that's the win is probable, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, it's set up to build skills build success right. and get some kinks out and stuff like that. So um, uh, Mississippi State, we're <laughs> on a roll uh, where, you know, but we're pretty evenly matched in terms of, um, you know, talent and, and, you know, win statistics and all that kind of stuff. Um, how packed is that going to be? I would guess that there's going to be quite a few people there. Okay. Don't you find that confusing if we're going on the you should feel failure, fear failure, because the only reason that sports exist is because of failure, mm -hmm. is because of the loss. If it was a sure win and that was what kept us all playing in this huge machine going, yeah. then that would fill the house. Mm -hmm. And then there would be much less when the, the outcome isn't as certain. Mm -hmm. So if you can embrace that mm -hmm. and recognize that that is the beauty of sport and that is why we play because mm -hmm. if you executed everything perfectly, then you'd probably get bored and stop. Right. And you would. You want to say no. Yeah. <laughs> that that, how great. boring. For sure. And then both teams would win and what's the point? <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> there was an old, old Twilight Zone episode with this mob boss that dies yeah and um he goes to the afterlife and he's ushered in and they're like man you know this is all yours like pool table here's all your cronies and you know all this so if he he was playing pool and every shot he called he made and every you know he'd call a hit on a rival mob gang or whatever and and it How'd it go? Oh, it, it was fabulous. We lost some, no men and got all the money. And, you know, and then, like, he'd say, man, some lobster would be good. And it just, you know, came up mm -hmm. and appeared before him. And, um, and after he would try to miss at pool, mm -hmm. and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And so the caretaker that had shown him in came up and said, how are you enjoying it? He said, man, I'm miserable. I'm bored. There's no challenge. And I, there's no... Um, wonder or curiosity I know exactly what to expect mm -hmm. I didn't think heaven would get it was going to be like this and then the music and he says who says this is heaven <laughs> don't, 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 right? <laughs> so that's the thing we only yeah. are in it for the possibility of getting better yeah. and to find out mm -hmm. so we have to embrace that we don't know yeah that's yeah. What, that's what makes it exciting yes you know if you serve and every serve you're going to serve an ace and it's 25-0 and it's like okay but the possibility of you know you don't know if it's going to go in you don't know if it's going to go out um that's what makes it exciting exactly so here's something that perpetuates that fear and um holds athletes back from taking a risk and doing what they need to do to get better and that's well what's the coach going to think mm -hmm. and well, if they see me mess up, they're going to think I'm not that good and I'm not going to start. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to that athlete? I, I mean, it's hard. It's really hard because everyone gets plagued with those kind of thoughts. But um, for me as a coach, I'm trying to instill this um, lean into your mistakes type of culture with my team and where it's okay 
to go for it and, and to not be perfect and um, that's the way to get better. So I would I would tell that athlete to, you know, turn to mindfulness a little bit more and, and just try and, you know, without judgment, just try and let it go. Um, because making mistakes and learning what works and what doesn't work, that's the way you're gonna get better. Um, and, you know, that's the way to grow as an mm -hmm. athlete. It also opens up this possibility of being able to receive feedback mm -hmm. and, um, and that constructive critique. Mm -hmm. Uh, and when you know when athletes come and they say I just can't watch film it's just too hard then that's what we work on mm -hmm. is that confidence to be able to look and get better and say yeah. that didn't go um, I also encourage watching the good stuff yeah. which a lot of athletes skip but um, being able to say that didn't go exactly like I wanted it to um, I can get better at that mm -hmm. and you know that's that's the whole thing you wouldn't be here you wouldn't be at this level right. if you weren't good, mm -hmm. you know? And so being able to, I love that, lean into it and accept it as part of the process mm -hmm. and part of what it takes to get better, mm -hmm. then you're really going to be able to elevate your performance because you'll play a lot more free. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to be in the moment. And this is where that practicing mindfulness helps yeah. so much. And, um, and you're able to grow from every performance, whether it went mostly, it never goes perfectly the way you want, right? right? Um, you know, so there's opportunity to learn in mm -hmm. every single performance. And when you can do that, yeah, man. Yeah, and it's, it's all, I mean, to me, it all just comes back to letting go of that judgment. Um, you know, when we make mistakes, we judge ourselves, and if we can just let that go and just um, think more, um, you know, in an observatory point where it's like, okay, that's that didn't work. This is what I can do better, and without judgment, just move forward that way um, is so important. Absolutely. Sometimes when I'm looking at something that I've done that I want to get better, so you know, uh, like I know I'm going to critique these videos and be like, I can get better and I, I could do this better. Um, it's really going to hold me back if I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. that was bad, yeah. you know? Um, so sometimes it's helpful for me to almost imagine, I actually do imagine, <laughs> that a friend has brought it to me yeah. and said, how can I get better? Well, I don't look at it with judgment. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, you went for it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And this is great. And this is great. Here's a place where you do have the skill to improve. Mm -hmm. And so being able to pretend it's somebody else yeah. um, can, in certain areas, help me uh, overcome that initial, yeah. like... I like that. Yeah. I like that. I think, you know, as athletes and coaches and humans in general, we say things to ourselves that we would never say to somebody else, you know, even right. if we just have like tiniest smidgen of conscience. Mm -hmm. um, so we're so much harder on ourselves than we are other people. So I like that as a strategy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, man, if somebody brought me um, something that they wanted some feedback on and I ripped into them the way I rip into myself, yeah. I, would, I would not be <laughs> friends with them. Like, you no. know, or they would not be friends with me. They would probably be crying yes. <laughs> at the end of that session. And then they would talk to everybody about, else about how terrible I was. Yeah. <laughs> and so how do I think I'm so much better mm -hmm. than other people that my expectations yeah. and my, you know, yeah. it's just not fair. Yeah, you just have to, it's hard. You have to try and let go of that perfectionism and mm -hmm. embrace that sport. And life is imperfect and you got to learn and move on. Yeah. And I will say, too, in terms of life, some of the best things in my life have come from just disastrous mistakes, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. being able to say, that, is, that did not go the way that I wanted it to, but, hey, I ended up here, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and when you can embrace it, it's like, that's part of it, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, do that. Look at how you're handling your mistakes. How are you handling those things that aren't executed exactly the way you want them to be? Create a plan for how you're gonna approach that and then start to work on practicing that plan for when you make mistakes. Plan what you're gonna say to yourself because when left to your own devices, it's typically not pretty. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> um, and when you can do that and 
gain that confidence to take those risks, you're gonna elevate your performance like you wouldn't believe, and it's gonna give you such an edge. And that edge we call the Rebel Edge.